747 in Trinidad and Tobago. We'll be joined now by the president of the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee, Brian Lewis, uh, to talk about Trinidad and Tobago's performances so far at the Central American and Caribbean Games in Barranquilla. A couple of silver medals last night. Uh, Alina Brooks in the 800 meters, Khalifa Sin Fort in the women's 100 meters. So uh, by, by the latest count, I think it's 22 medals, uh, the best ever being 34 in Mayaguez in Puerto Rico in 2010. Brian, thanks very much uh, for joining us. And let me take the, the opportunity th again to thank you publicly for your contribution to our little event in Aramwez uh, just about four you, weeks you're ago. You're welcome. It's, it's always a pleasure. That's where the real thing happened. In, indeed, uh, with, with the communities and with the youngsters who, who really stand to benefit. And, uh, and obviously, there's a lot of focus on, uh, as I was having the discussion with you, what they go get for winning medals. And the TTOC uh, ha has your own, you have your own uh, policy of, of, of financial rewards uh, for, for athletes. But before we talk about that, put this performance in perspective so far at the CAC Games in relation to what, you, what the results that have come forward? I would say it's encouraging and I say encouraging because the CAC Games, Central American and Caribbean Games, aside from being the oldest regional multi-sport game um, sanctioned by the Olympic IOC, the International Olympic Committee, is, a, is, is at a crucial point in the context of the Olympic cycle. So two years away from Tokyo 2020, which gets on the way on the 24th of July, 2020. It's an important milepost and signpost as to where we are in context of, of the realistic um, targets for 2020. So to have 22 medals at this particular point, and most notably the start provided by cycling, swimming, um, and rowing, where traditionally um, we usually would wait until, or have to wait until track until and track field starts. Yeah. I think it is, it is signals the dawn of a new era in a very tangible sense because you see the ages of some of these athletes and it's not just that they have one goal, but they have one goal in the context of setting national records, um, top five world times and uh, games records. So that's hugely positive. And, and, and that, that's why import, it's important that, that, that you're contextualizing it that way because, uh, again, CAC, uh, as far as the ranking of CAC and how compared to uh, an Olympic Games, a World Championships, Pan Am Games and so on, uh, based on the, the range of sports in which we've had success, the performances that, that, that we've seen so far, what does that point towards Tokyo 2020 uh, as far as a strong representation. I think that it, 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 it means that, that for the medalists and those who may have just fallen short of the podium, um, the, the journey starts over. You, there, is, there is no room for complacency. What when the CSC Games also showed is the importance of that ecosystem, the support behind the athletes. It's a combination of private sector, public sector, um, the, the guardians, parents, etc. And in particular on this occasion, a lot of that was focused in a particular way. In terms of cycling, one cannot underestimate the impact of Erin Hartwell, a world-class coach, and the impact of a world-class cycling velodrome. In terms of swimming, you have a world-class aquatic center. And uh, as I said, you know, it, that's the kind of effort that we have to make notwithstanding the economic challenges. And you talk about the economic challenge, that brings up the issue of, of the, the, the TTOC with its own uh, policy of, of financial rewards for the medalists from CAC, from individual uh, team performances and so on. Why do you see that as important? Because we were having the discussion off right. here. And, 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 and you, well, you from the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee, it's not about the athletes wanting something. It's a recognition that in the games under the Olympic Committee, in particular senior. People have already asked, which I think is a bit unfortunate, about junior athletes, etc. And that's a context. Uh, the focus is on the games, senior games. So you have Central American and Caribbean games, Pan American games, Commonwealth games, and the Olympics. That's the elite level. Mm -hmm. And what, it, what the TTOC sought to do from 2013 was recognize that it's a performance-based environment and that there is a cost to the athletes getting to the podium. And uh, we figured 
that you know it was important to tie it up performance based um, environment rather than a sort of dependency and entitlement which could lead to complacency. I mean, I mean don't get me wrong Brian I understand what you're saying I mean, I, I, if, if I implied it I apologize that no, I never, no, I never apologize. suggested that I the, think it's a valid concern. I never suggested that the athletes were demanding this but what I'm saying is that I, I in fact I accuse ourselves in the media because when people achieve something the first not the first the first headline is what they did the second half of the headline is what they go get. Right. Uh, and in that, uh, I'm just wondering, right. are you inadvertently participating in that process of the, rather than recognizing it as an honor and a privilege to represent your country, that you're going down the inadvertently, the what they go get kind of road? Well, it's not inadvertent. We recognize it's an honor and a privilege. And I can give you the assurance that when you talk to the young athletes, whether it be Dylan Carter, his, his swimming colleagues, Nicholas Paul, Tenille Campbell, Alicia Chow, they take great pride in representing Trinidad and Tobago on the red, white, and black. The reality, though, is to be competitive at that level we, Trinidad and Tobago, are competing with nations that are better resourced than us and some less resourced than us. But the reality is that it is a, there is a cost attached to it. In creating the medal bonuses, we turn it called, it recognizes that it is a performance-based environment and that there is a cost. We can never, the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee, can never recompense for the actual course that some That's of where these I was going to, because, because you know, some people are, will argue, Brian, I mean, uh, the, the 7,000 for gold, 4,000 for silver, 2,500 mm -hmm. for bronze at individual level and at team events, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000 for individuals. That doesn't even scratch the surface of the, the, the cost that would have And there paid. is nothing that scratches the surface. So when a company gives bonuses to its, to its, to its employees or uh, an insurance company or sales department offer bonuses, it is based on a certain approach. We cannot, at the end of the day, it's a measure, it's a balance. We know that the athletes appreciate it because the concept of medal bonuses for performances is, is established for many of the athletes in terms of their professional contracts, in terms of various contracts at the level of elite and professional sport. At the end of the day, if we want our athletes to compete and podium, the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee is of the firm view that we must create an environment that gives the athlete something to aim for. And, and in that sense, do you think that what you're seeing from CAC, what you're hearing from the athletes when they return, the enjoyment of the environment, the camaraderie, the, the team effort, th does that bode well not just in terms of medals, because we often, at the end of the day, how many medals we go get in Tokyo? How many medals we will get there? Whatever. Does it bode well to a, 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 a greater level of sporting excellence across the range of sports that we can look forward I to? I think that there are athletes who get it, and there are still athletes who probably will never get it, and those who may choose not to devote the kind of focus to get into the next level. At the end of the day, the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee is responsible for games that are part of the elite level of sport in terms of those games. And we can't get away from that. The athletes go to these games not to fail, but to perform at their best. That best at times may result in hardware. At times it may result in disappointment and failure, which provides a learning opportunity. Most of the athletes who have medaled, you have already have heard them talk about Tokyo. Because for the athletes in the Olympic sports world and Commonwealth sports world, the Olympics is the pinnacle. Being an Olympic champion is the pinnacle of their sporting career. And, and that is important to recognize because prior to this period, people, the athletes, used to be, it, it, it was something to be, to keep quiet, that you had aspirations to be an Olympic champion. The environment 
didn't encourage it. It made it look as if you're being unrealistic. What the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee has sought to create, despite criticism, is the environment that it is okay to aspire to be an Olympic champion. We have set a big goal, 10 or more Olympic gold medals by the year 2024. We believe that in the context of the Olympic environment, that is an important aspect of the environment. Our athletes must feel comfortable that they can aspire to be Olympic champions. Brian, we just have about 60 seconds left, but I have to ask you, the whole table tennis situation, mm -hmm. uh, in the few seconds, I mean, it, it needs a lot more time, but just a quick on, on what happened there with, with no table tennis representation on the men's side because of that arbitration situation. It's not only table tennis. I think that we need to improve and better the governance within sport in Trinidad and Tobago. And that's a collective effort on the part of the Trinidad and Tobago Olympic Committee, the National Sporting Organization, the Ministry of Sport and Youth Affairs, and the sport company. We must work together to ensure that these lessons, that, that never again should we have this situation. And, and uh, I'm being told by my producer that we have a, a couple more minutes, or is it time? In fact, we, we, have, we have a couple more minutes, and, and therefore, uh, in, 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 in that time, uh, Brian, uh, as far as the, the sporting administrators themselves buying in, you talk about the athletes, and it's not just about the Table Tennis Association, but do you get the sense that the sporting organizations themselves, the NSOs, that they are buying into that athlete-centered type of philosophy that, that, that the TTOC is trying to develop? No. Some of them... Some of them are struggling to orient towards that. And, and that's understandable because for years they are focused on being excellent administrators. In terms of being athlete-centered and market-oriented, it's, it's, it's almost a paradigm shift for many of the sports administrators. And that's where the work needs to be done. Because if it is that the athlete is at the tip of the spear, then a lot of the issues that we have, whether it's West Indies cricket and otherwise, we will not have because there is a recognition that the athlete is the end and not the means to an end. And for many sport administrators, that mindset is where we need to evolve. The athlete is not the means to an end. The athlete is the end. Brian Lewis, thanks very much for taking the time, as always, uh, to, to join us and offer some perspectives in, in the context of our performances at the CAC Games. 22 medals so far, more to come, we hope, during the course of the final few days before they wrap up on Friday. Uh, we'll take a quick break here and then I'll be back to wrap up the show a little over time, but uh, we felt it necessary to highlight some of the issues and spend some time with them as well, developing those various points during the course of this morning. We'll be back to wrap up the show. We need to